Welcome to Digital Asset News, the top stories in cryptocurrency digital assets, and I'm breaking down to bite-sized pieces. So today, starting with a great article by CMEC Maznavi, and it states, after a week of bullish news for Bitcoin, crypto investor sentiment index is at extreme greed. And these are the things we really need to watch out for, which is extreme greed, which can really lead us into some major pitfalls and how we need to actually avoid them also. Crypto newcomer soars 1,125% after receiving a big boost from Binance. And we had actually talked about this in Friday's video. And I have to be honest with you, I never would have covered this if it wasn't for Trade the Chain. We also have to take a look at my portfolio, how I've added to it, why I'm biased, and where I store all my cryptocurrencies and digital assets. And finally, we'll take a look at Q of the day. Where we're going to help a subscriber move their Uniswap over to Celsius. So we'll do all that, but first let's take a look at what's going on in the market. So today it is October 25th, it's about 2 p.m. Texas time. And uh, hey, I gotta tell you, I gotta tell you, it's been a great week. So Bitcoin is still holding strong on a Sunday, which is amazing. Bitcoin is at 13,042, uh, down a little bit, but over the seven day period, 15% can't beat that. I will take that W. Ethereum down a little bit, but still above 400. So it's still a great week. And it's almost 11% up for the seven day average. Tether's Tether, XRP holding strong at a quarter. Bitcoin cash down a little bit, uh, but again, 11% uh, up, which is of course not too surprising uh, considering that they are part of the uh, four horsemen, I, li I like to call them because they, it's going to be Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, Ethereum, and Litecoin. Those are the four that's going to kick it all off for the PayPal integration. Chainlink down, uh, wow, 4%, that's a lot, that's a lot but uh, still holding okay at 12.30, but it is up almost 16% for the week. Binance coin is down, sure, Polkadot, not too much, and really just a little bit of, uh, around the board, just a little bit down, a little bit up. Uh, Bitcoin SV, for some reason, up 5.3%, no idea why. There's been no news, no new partnerships, no nothing really going on that I know of. Let me know if I'm wrong in the comments section, I don't know why I would go up 5%, but hey, it is cryptocurrency digital asset market, so who knows. <laughs> And what else we got? Nothing really too big. Looks to be about the same thing. Whoa, except for Filecoin. 32%. Uh, back to $34, so not too bad. So if you bought Filecoin when it really dipped down pretty low, then congratulations, this is a pretty good day. Uh, maybe uh, the miners and developers came to an agreement and there was some kind of problem or issue going on between the both of them. So uh, hopefully that resolves. Filecoin is actually, it looks like a pretty good project. It's kind of like Theta where it uses unused resources to fuel the network. Theta is all about uh, the streaming or data for, for video to give HD or 4K. And Filecoin is all about uh, using uh, unused resources for cloud storage. So I really need to do a, a bigger deep dive because I took a look at their website. It looked pretty good uh, as far as like the concept, but I know everybody says once it's new, of course it's a scam, but uh, you know, hey, not all, not everything's a scam. That's all I'll say. Theta Network uh, down a little bit, which is good for me. I'm trying to uh, build up my Theta uh, depository of tokens. So hopefully it falls some more. <laughs> <laughs> that's really it and what else we got uh, not too much looks to be about the same all the way down here so let's just jump into today's top story so this is a uh, fantastic article written by uh, Siamak Maznavi hope I said his name right I've actually went and followed him on Twitter he I've covered a lot of his stories I don't give him near enough credit so uh, Siamak if you're listening uh, fantastic hopefully uh, <laughs> I didn't put your name too much Hopefully I didn't butcher your name too much. So this is all going to go over just a recap of everything that's been happening in the last week. And also it's going to talk about extreme greed. And I will just preface it with this. This is some of the most dangerous times of pitfalls that you can come into. This is kind of like 2016 when we know where this market is going. I mean, we all know it. Let's just be honest. Let's call a spade a spade. Uh, it's going to go up. It's going to rock it up. When? I have no idea. I mean, it could be in three months, it could be in a year and a half. I'm not for sure, but this is the time to accumulate. And the real question is, you know, how greedy are you going to be? I mean, how much are you going to put into it? And I see pitfalls such as people just going, you know what? I got a lot of money. I'm just going to put it all into X coin or whatever it is. And I think that's a mistake because you have to understand, we're still going to see turbulence. There's still going to be major dips and there's going to be major, uh, you know, peaks. So you have to really pace yourself for the long haul. This is not a sprint. This is a marathon. So if you're out there going, well, you know, Bitcoin's going to go to, you know, 250,000. Okay. I mean, maybe. Okay. I'm going to sell my house 
and I'm going to put everything into Bitcoin. I mean, that's a pretty extreme case. Or I have 14,000 just laying around or 13,000. I'm going to put it all into Bitcoin. You could do that. But remember, I mean, something major could happen. Who would have ever expected COVID-19, the coronavirus to come in, hit global everything and Bitcoin to go down to, you know, below $4,000? I mean, something else could happen again, truly altering. I don't know what it is, uh, but Bitcoin could go down again. Now we know it's going to go back up. So if you put all your money in right now and you lose 50% because you're like, oh, shoot, something happened. Then, you know, Bitcoin went from 13 to five. Uh, that's a bad play because if you just would have dollar cost average in, just put in, you know, 100, 500, 1,000 or whatever it is, and then just done it slowly and slowly and slowly. When it does go down to 5,000 or 6,000, I'm not saying it is. I'm just saying when it does take those dips, First of all, you don't have that tightness in your chest. Second of all, you, is you have money to buy those dips. So I know it seems like you should be dumping a ton of money into it. I'm just telling you right now, don't do it. Don't get too greedy. Pace yourself. This is a marathon. All right, let's talk about what's going on as far as this last week. So let's call it. Uh, this has been a fantastic week for Bitcoin and to a lesser extent, uh, Ethereum, Bitcoin Cash and Litecoin, obviously because of the PayPal announcement, which was just really fantastic. So first on Wednesday, I did, I did not cover the story because I didn't even know about it. FinTech startup Mode Global Holdings PLC announced it had become the first publicly listed company in the UK to adopt Bitcoin as a treasury reserve asset. According to the press release, it's allocated up to 10% of its cash reserves to purchase Bitcoin and adopt it as a treasury reserve asset. And that is on top of all the other big company names that have actually gotten into Bitcoin uh, and have taken the fiat from the treasury into Bitcoin, which are people like MicroStrategy, Michael Saylor, the CEO, uh, they bought in at 425 million. Now they're almost at 500 million. So this is like maybe three weeks, four weeks ago. So that guy looks like a genius right now, right? Galaxy Digital has been there for quite some time. Mike Novogratz, they bought in at 134. Now they're at 216. Square, they bought in at 50. Now they're at 61. And this is just like two or three weeks. Imagine making $11 million in a couple of weeks. Uh, try doing that anywhere else. Then we got other places like, oh, look at that, Voyager Digital. Uh, they put in almost 8 million. They doubled that in a very short amount of time. Actually, everybody's up. Every, let's just be honest. Everybody's up. Uh, the new one, Stone Ridge, Stone Ridge Holdings. They put in 115th. Jeez, they're at 141. 141 million already. Amazing. So this is all good news for the crypto market in general. I think it's just fantastic. On top of this new one, which is Mode Global Holdings. So uh, looking pretty good as far as corporations. And like I've said before, uh, if you're an entity, a corporation, a conglomerate, and you're looking from the outside in, you're like, hey, we need to get on this, guys, because uh, the bus is about to leave the station. We need to get on this. So that's the first thing. Second, which we've covered on this uh, channel ad nauseum, is that PayPal is going to be integrating with Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, Ethereum, and Litecoin. Uh, I don't want to really beat a dead horse, but that's kind of big. And this, But this part was a little, little nuanced, and this was Dan Schulman, President and CEO of PayPal, and he said this, the shift to digital forms of currencies is inevitable. Right there, what he is saying, it's not for or so much for investors, the people that are already in there. We already know this. He's saying these things. It's like a shot across the bow for all the banks or the financial institutions to say, wake up. You're missing the boat. Things are going to pass you by. You're about to get blockbustered. So hopefully they all listen. And if they don't, I think they're all going to fall the wayside. Anyhow, digital currencies bring with it clear advantages in terms of financial inclusion and access, efficiency, speed, and resilience of the payment system, and the ability for governments to disperse funds to citizens quickly. So a couple of things to unpack there. First of all, really, what again, what he's saying is like, look, banks have not updated their software since the 1970s. You guys keep still using Swift. Consumers don't will not accept that. You need to upgrade. Second, he's saying, look, all the stimulus checks that you guys put out was a nightmare. It was a hard uh, proposition to actually get them into the hands of people who needed it the most. And you had a lot of problems along the way. So why don't you make it easier on yourselves and just go digital like every other industries? You got to talk to them like they're five because they can't get it through their thick heads, I guess. So that's good news. And then the last piece, uh, PayPal is planning to expand the features to Venmo and select international markets in the first half of 2021. So when PayPal opens this up, it just will be for the United States first. But then in 2021, I mean, look, sky's the limit. So again, this is big news. Uh, 
I don't know how else to say it. Uh, it's just going to be enormous moving forward. And this was interesting. Third on Friday, 2023rd, Nicholas Penegrautsglow. I'm sure I nailed it. A managing director at JP Morgan who works on global market strategy, published a report that talked about the long-term potential of Bitcoin. And not that that was interesting enough that he just published it, but it was who it went out to and how big of a newsletter it is. So Dr. P, as I'll call him now, he does the publication Flows and Liquidity, which is one of JP Morgan's flagship publications. The latest edition of Flows and Liquidity was sent out to the bank's clients yesterday and was titled Bitcoin's Competition with Gold. And it pretty much just lays it out and said, look, because of the fierce competition with gold and the millennials' decision to really look into digital assets and cryptocurrencies, they will adopt this faster as well as younger generations. So this is a fantastic opportunity as an investment vehicle. And that is JP Morgan. Remember that the CEO of JP Morgan said he would fire any trader in a second for trading Bitcoin. This is on September 12th, 2017. My, how things have changed in just a couple of short years. But look, I'm not here to hate on anybody. I'm glad that Jamie realizes his mistake, and I'm hoping that he'll uh, join all of us into this natural inclusion, into the next evolution of financial resurgence. However, he is a banker, so I'm not gonna hold my breath. Anyhow, moving on to our last piece which is kind of a bummer and that was the uh, almighty hope that there was going to be a physical stimulus package uh, between the democrats and the republicans uh, in washington and there was supposed to be some kind of deal for a covid 19 relief package but here's the thing uh, it's never going to happen uh, not before the election i will just say that because this is all political posturing and uh, the democrats are going to kick the football down the road or the can down the road they're going to punt the football i should have said and uh, nothing's going to get done. And not only will it not get done, it won't get done uh, for quite some time, actually, because the Republican-controlled Senate is set to leave town on Monday after voting on confirmation of Trump's Supreme Court nominee, Amy Connie Barrett. So if this doesn't happen by Monday, newsflash, it won't. It's not going to happen for quite some time, at least until after the uh, election, which is in uh, less than two weeks, as a matter of fact. So you have to remember that this is government, and government doesn't work for the people. The government works for special interests and banks and corporations. They don't work for people. They haven't for quite some time. So if it happens to align with the best interests of the people that these corporations want, then sure, they'll play that off. But I, uh, I have no faith in the government whatsoever. I think they are inept. I think they have lost touch with, with reality and what the real people are actually going through. And um, I cannot believe that we have these laggards that are in Congress. Just my personal opinion, but you have to remember something, that with all these pitfalls and all these problems that are going on, this is actually good for our, our space because with the uh, inability for the powers that be to actually act and do anything that actually uh, results in some kind of positive change, uh, this is good for Bitcoin. This is good for cryptocurrency. It's good for digital assets. I, for one, see this as a very bright future for everybody in this space. Now, remember, uh, talking about greed, this is the problem. Right now, there's a thing called the Crypto Fear and Greed Index, which is based on the analysis of emotions and sentiments from different uh, varying sources. And they just take a look at a big aggregate of different factors. And right now, they can say that it's extreme greed because everything, there is so much good news in the space. I mean, everything we just talked about. Uh, plus, we can kind of see the light at the end of the tunnel. So you have to be careful right now because I know you want to dump <laughs> a ton of money into the space, but I'm just telling you right now, it's a good space to be in. Just don't dump all your money. My personal opinion, not financial advice, this is what I'm going to do, dollar cost average, be a little bit reserved, be measured, and prepare for dips when they happen. Look, you can trade and that's fine. I mean, I have nothing against traders. Uh, that's great stuff. But try to just sit back and just be an investor uh, just for a little bit if, if you're not already. It worked pretty well for Warren Buffett. I think it'll work pretty well for a lot of people. So that's all I have in this one. Let me know what you think in the comments section and uh, let's move on to our next story. So next up, crypto newcomer soars 1100% uh, after receiving big boost from Binance. So what is this all about? Well, there was a relatively unknown crypto asset and it soared after getting a burst of support from the crypto exchange Binance. On Friday, the decentralized music streaming platform Audius, which is audio, it's a good ticker name, audio, launched with little attention from crypto influencers on social media. So 
Daily Huddle, I mean, they can't be everywhere, but I will just say this. We covered this on Friday, Audius, Audio, as well as uh, the Easy, EasyFi Network, which were both launched which were both launch on Binance. And the reason that I knew about it was because I did some fantastic research and I'm super smart. Uh, I'm not. It's because I signed up with Trade the Chain uh, with Alex Masculi's company. And these were the two alerts that I got, 12 a.m. I wasn't awake, so I missed this one. And then 10, 10 o'clock a.m. I was doing my live stream over at Theta. So I missed this one as well, but these were already there. And then when I looked down, I'm like, ooh, what's all this? And then when I took a look at uh, Audius, what had happened, this is what happened. So I got this alert around 10 a.m. and we talked about this on Friday. I was around 32 cents, somewhere around there, and then boop, 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 it just blew up uh, over the next couple hours. So uh, if I was a trader, not, uh, I could have made a, a killing, matter of fact. Now, here's the problem with trading. Now, it, it did go down, and I'm obviously uh, not good with this stuff, but if you're a trader, maybe you would see importance of getting on this information early. And we cover this uh, pretty in depth. I actually had on Alex uh, Mascioli from Bequant, and I had on Josh Frank, who's a CEO of the Tide, the data analytics firm that put this app together. And it was pretty interesting. So check that out. I'll link it at the very end of this video. So the real question I have was, what was going on behind the scenes? And this is what they state. And this was actually some of the data that the Tide had actually uh, disseminated and put out. And it said like this, Binance Labs, the investment and incubation arm of Binance, has made a strategic investment in Audius, a decentralized streaming protocol, giving everyone the freedom to distribute, monetize, and stream any audio content. Specifically, Binance Labs led an extension round for Audius worth $1.25 million. Wow. With 750,000 monthly active users, MAUs, and over a million streams each month. And this is this is audio. This is actually going on right now. And more than 10,000, 100,000 tracks. Audius has teamed up with top artists like Deadmau5, 3 Lau, or LAU, and RAC to help crypto cross the chasm. So this is a project that already has legs. Binance put a lot of money into it. And it was a pretty amazing that I got this alert. And if, uh, like, again, if I'd have been a trader, I would have but I crushed it, but I'm not. So again, the news catalyzed a steep moving upward to as high as 49 cents. And then of course, just so you know, it actually fell back down uh, as uh, the investors took profits or traders took profits, whatever you want to say. So that's an interesting little piece. Again, I will link this video at the end of uh, this one so you can check it out for Friday. It's pretty interesting. Let's move on. Next up, let's talk about the portfolio. So I like to talk about these things because when you're watching these YouTube videos and, and you're listening to streams, whatever else you, you got to understand, uh, people are biased. I'm biased. I'm super biased. And I'm biased because I've invested into uh, these particular uh, projects. And I just wanted to be transparent as possible. And then also talk about some new tokens that I picked up. So first of all, I had to take a look at my portfolio just to see, you know, which ones had value and which ones have, you know, sloughed off. So I had to do a little, little reval. Here's where I'm at. With Bitcoin, I'm almost at 50%. 50% of my portfolio is almost Bitcoin. I invest in a Bitcoin, not because I think it's like the greatest technology of all time and that it's super fast or anything. I mean, it's a little bit older. It's a little bit slower. It is the first, but I still believe in it. It's on the forefront of everybody's mind. It's in the public consciousness. And hey, institutions seem to want to buy the living heck out of it. So I think Bitcoin's going to do pretty good in the short to medium term. I don't know what what to do what to tell you about in 20 years i mean no one can so but i think i'm going to hold on to this for quite some time uh ethereum i invested into that because everything's built on ethereum just like in the early days of the internet uh, you had https http tcp ip and things were built on these protocols that's what ethereum is meant for to be built upon and of course that's why you see uh, all the icos or were uh, the decentralized finance or DeFi, all the smart contracts and dApps. Uh, Ethereum is going to be huge. I think it's a ten thousand dollar coin. I think it's a one trillion dollar market cap. Laugh at me now. That's fine, but that's how I see it, and that's why I've invested heavily into it. Now, if Ethereum for some reason breaks down and doesn't make it, uh, as far as these things, there's some other ones that I've invested into to hedge my bet. One of those being uh, Cardano. They could very easily uh, break in. I mean, like Charles Hoskinson is behind the helm, and he was part of the Great Eight that had uh, founded Ethereum, and then. If you know Ethereum Cardano don't make it, well, maybe it's Tezos or maybe it's EOS, and that's why I invested in uh, those types of projects. Theta is my next big holding, and I've invested a lot more in a Theta, probably because of this. I believe in the platform. I believe in a number of platforms like Voyager and Celsius. I've been talking about all the time, and also Uniswap. And if I'm going to talk about them, I'm going to invest in them because I want to have a stake in where things go. And if I tell you that I believe in it, 
then I have to invest into it and I have to be true to myself. And that's why I'm going to invest heavily into Theta moving forward. If you don't know, uh, I've been streaming there almost uh, almost every day around 11 a.m. Uh, Mountain Time. And you can catch me over there and uh, I'll answer any questions and uh, do the stories like I do over here. A lot more interactive. It's pretty fun. I, I actually love it. I, I love going over there and doing those things. So Theta, I think, is huge. Again, it's all about allocating resources that are needed for streaming services, HD or 4K. I mean, look what happened with the coronavirus. Everybody was at home. And what do we have to do? Well, we watched a lot of videos, played a lot of games. We did a lot of nothing. And, uh, and as the future comes forward, I can only see more things like that. So Theta does those types of things and it allows for better streaming, more streaming, and allocation of resources. The next two, XRP and Stellar. Um, honestly, I thought there was a big... I still think there's a there's a, a good business for cross-border payments and remittances. So I believe one of those is going to win. Now, I don't know if either of them. Stellar is making quite a big push, and they're uh, on their way, and they've done a lot of good things, especially one with uh, uh, supporting USDC on their network. So I will look into that a little more heavily. But uh, XRP is still there. I've lost a ton on XRP, but I refuse to sell it. And uh, honestly, if it goes to zero, it goes to zero. I could care less. Polkadot is all about interoperability. And I, the main reason I invested in Polkadot was because of Dr. Gavin Wood. He was part of the great eight, the ones that actually had created what I call the Ethereum Mafia. And since he's already done it once, I think he can do it again. Also, he's not a competitor with any smart contract platform. Uh, it's all about interoperability and bringing things together. And I think those are the types of things, uh, projects that I can totally get behind. So yes, Tazel's already talked about that. VeChain, I think it's going to be great as far as tracking. Uh, also, as far as uh, getting ahead of counterfeits and not just like bags and shoes, but like food and supplements and uh, formula for, for infants. I mean, that's huge. I think VeChain could be uh, the next big thing. And then Uniswap and Voyager and Celsius. Now, Uniswap, I got for free, like a lot of you did, but I will not sell it. I will not sell it because they, did, they created the community the right way. They didn't give this to some huge investors. They didn't put it in the hands of like five to 10 people. They say, you know what? Uh, here's 400 governance tokens. Use them as you see fit. And like it wanted like 62% or 60% of the community. And I can get behind that. That's fantastic. And I believe that decentralized exchanges probably going to be the future. So I will be putting more money into that. And the last two, Voyager and Celsius. I talk about them nonstop on my exchange and wallet feed spreadsheet. Uh, this is in the uh, description of my videos. So I'm always talking about the one, two, three punch, Kraken, Celsius, and Voyager. So if I want to talk much about that, I'm going to invest into them. And on top of that, there was a uh, story we covered yesterday where Voyager Digital, uh, they are going to buy the European crypto exchange uh, LGO. And not only are they going to buy that, LGO token and VGX token are going to merge together and it's going to be a governance token and you're going to be able to, to gain 7% yield or APY per year on top of new features or just features such as uh, DeFi functions, uh, such as a community governance and staking. So I can get behind that. And I'm in business. I own businesses. I know there is one universal truth. If you are not growing, you are dying. So with Voyager to step up and do this type of acquisition, this is huge. And I have to get behind them because I believe in them. And then lastly, Celsius. If you're new to the channel, welcome. If you're not new to the channel, you know for a fact I have put a, a good amount of my portfolio into the Celsius wallet or the Celsius network because of the yield, the APY. And I believe in Alex Mashinsky. I believe what they're doing. I love their phrase they have, do good, then do well. I mean, do good for the community and then you will prosper on the back end. So I can totally get behind that and they're safe and I've had no problems with them. So, so this is my portfolio. This is what I'm running with and I'll probably be uh, adding to my positions. On top of the next question I get is, well, where do you actually store it all? And here's where I store all my cryptocurrency digital assets. So 60% is on my nano ledger. Uh, I believe that's not your keys, not your crypto. That is true. So I put 60% at minimum on there. And it fluctuates between here and Celsius. However, at Celsius, I do have 30% of my entire portfolio on Celsius. And some people will say, well, you know, you should, you should keep it all on Ledger and you should keep it all on heart and cold storage. Why? Why? Why don't I make my crypto work for me? So I'm going to take it over to Celsius and I'm going to put it over there and they can do what they do with it, loan it out, and I can make my money on it at fantastic APY. Now, whatever I can do on Ledger, I can stake it, that's true, but the ones that I can't stake, why would I keep it on there? Why don't I put over in Celsius? Could Celsius 
someday just pop up and go, surprise, we're a scam and we're taking all your money. Sure, I guess. But they've been around for years. Alex Mashinsky, he created voice over internet protocol. He's been, a, he's been a part of a couple of billion dollar industries. So if I have to trust somebody, I'll go with that. And then the other nine, nine or 1% to, to a total of 10, I have a little bit on Coinbase and Kraken because I put them on there to kick off the bull run. Look, in 2017, if I would have been smarter and know what I know now, I wouldn't have waited so long to sell because what goes up will inevitably come down and you have to understand that things will not go up forever. And there is a emotional tie that you have sometimes and it's, it's hard to say, but once you go through it, you'll know it. So I have to make sure that things are set in motion without the without me having to think about it. So I put a, a limited amount on the exchanges. I have my limit orders or my sell orders set up. So for example, like when Bitcoin hits around 19,720 something, it's going to sell around 3% of my Bitcoin right away. Why is it that weird number? Because everybody's gonna sell at 20,000. So why would I sell at 20,000? I will probably miss out on orders. If I sell it right before that, as it's going up, usually they'll get all filled. And I wanna make sure that I do that so I'm not sitting on the sidelines going, oh, I, should I sell? Should I wait till 21, 22, 25? No, I need to take my emotions out of the equation and just get the ball rolling. Now, we'll see if I'm able to actually do, do it for my next part of my exit strategy, which is when Bitcoin hits 30,000. We will see. And then of course, lastly, I just have 1% on my Brave browser wallet just for small transactions and things like that. And just to actually show how to do things on this show. So hopefully that answers some questions about, you know, why I do things and why I'm a little biased and uh, and where I have my cryptocurrencies. And actually speaking of uh, Brave Browser, this is gonna tie in perfectly to Q of the day. So here's what's going on. So this was a question from a subscriber and uh, it's just gonna talk about, you know, how can I buy Celsius? Uh, through Uniswap. So let's just jump right in. I'll show you. Let's go to the office. All right, everybody, and welcome back to the office. So uh, today for Q of the day, it's a pretty good one. It's multifaceted, I, I guess I would say, because um, there's a little bit of a, a caveat to it, I guess. So here is what it actually says. So it says, hey, Rob, I've been in the crypto space for only six months. However, I've been active in getting knowledge. I'm trying to transfer my uni tokens to my Celsius account, but I keep getting in a circular loop of to and from token selection. I've selected expert mode on Uniswap, all right, and I'm using Google Chrome on a MacBook. You're only, uh, you're one of the few people I trust and rely on and have been a great advocate for Uniswap and Swalcius. Yes, I love them both, they're great. Uh, I would greatly appreciate assistance you can provide. Thanks for all that you do for the community. So uh, it's, it's a good question. I think the first question I have to ask is, where are you holding your Uniswap? Because it says, I'm trying to transfer my uni tokens to my Celsius account, but I keep getting in a loop. And I think what's, what's going on here is that uh, since you were one of those, I'm, I'm assuming that um, this gentleman was, was one of those people that uh, was given the, the airdrop for, for Uniswap. I'm not for sure. So if, that, if that's the case, then it should be connected. So your Uniswap should be connected to one of your uh, wallets, whatever your wallet is. What, whatever your wallet is, whatever your wallets are. So for me personally, like I use uh, the Brave browser and that's the wallet that I had used uh, Uniswap with that it was connected to. So the Uniswap just, uh, the tokens just went there for the airdrop. Now, if you use another wallet uh, to connect to Uniswap, say like an Anna Ledger or something like that, then you need to find that wallet. And that is, that is the, the first step to figure out, okay, which wallet are these actually in? Because when you go to Uniswap, uh, it'll, automatically check your browser and see if it's connected and it'll just say 400 unis which is pretty cool uh, so for me i know exactly where it is so for you my friend uh just check to make sure where the uniswap are so the next question would be then well if i whatever wallet it is how do i transfer to celsius so uh, i can help you with the second part for sure the first part takes a little bit more legwork so let's jump into my computer and my phone and i'm going to show you how to transfer over uniswap uh, to Celsius, which is pretty slick and easy. And also what's great about that is that uh, you're in a little little interest. So I like free money. Uh, well, it's not really free, but you know what I mean. All right, let's jump right in. Okay, let's figure out the best way to do this. So what I do is I have a wallet in my Brave browser. Uh, if you're looking for how to download the Brave browser, there's a link in the description below. So first we're gonna start a new tab. And then I'm gonna, on the top left-hand corner, it says Brave. I'm gonna click on Brave, go to Preferences. 
And here's all the things you need to know and all the uh, extensions and brave rewards and history, all great stuff. Just go to crypto wallets. And if you haven't created a wallet already, you can do the you can do so right here. Uh, there's a link that'll just say create a new wallet, and you will always start out with Ethereum and basic attention token or BAT. I already have one set up, so this is pretty simple. And there's my Uniswap down there. So what I want to do is I want to send, let's just do a test run. And I always recommend that you do a test transaction so you don't lose all your cryptocurrency. So let's just send between 10 and 20 uh, Uniswap over and see how that does. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, where it says send Uni. I want to send Uni. So where do I want to send it? Well, this is where I'm going to get my Celsius wallet. So let's jump in my phone. So I'm going to open up the Celsius uh, network app. And it's always going to ask me for my two-factor authentication codes. So let me jump on back to the Authenticator app. So I'm going to pull this up. I'm going to find Celsius. Click on that. Copied. Go back here and paste. Pretty simple. So now at the very bottom, I'm going to click on the icon that says Celsius. What I want to do is I want to transfer. And it's going to state only transfer Ethereum to this wallet. It already starts with that. I understand. I want to switch that and scroll down to Uniswap. And it's going to tell me again, only transfer Uniswap to this wallet. Sure, I understand. So again, do not send Ethereum to Uniswap. Do not send uh, Bitcoin to Uniswap. Do not send uh, whatever coin EOS to, to Ethereum. It has to be the same cryptocurrency or digital asset token. So just remember that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this and it's going to copy to my clipboard. And because I'm using an iPhone, I also have a Mac, it's going to copy that onto my computer. And all I got to do is click on here and then command V and it will copy over everything perfectly. So I'm just gonna check it, 0x774, and on my phone, the last uh, four is uh, FD4F, so yes, that matches up. And it's gonna have right here, asset, uni, amount, how much do I wanna put in there? Well, let's go with 10 Uniswap. Something simple, I'm not gonna break the bank if I lose it, and then off I go. So here's a transaction fee, slow, average, and fast, uh, you know, Let's just do it. Let's just do it average. That right? doesn't really matter actually, because when it's at the same price, it, it won't really go up. Now I can go fast for 0.76, and today I want to because I want to get this video done. So let's just do fast, and I'll splurge on myself and uh, do the 22 cents, 21 cents, and uh, click on next. So now it's going to say, okay, here's what you got. You're going to send 10 Uni Uniswap. It's going to go from this account to the Celsius wallet FD4F. That sounds about right. And I'm going to click confirm. And it's going to say confirmation or confirm transaction at the very top. And you're like, great. Now I get to go check my Celsius wallet, make sure it's there. And sometimes with Celsius, it'll send you an email. Actually, all the time, I think it does. It'll send you an email, say, hey, we've received your whatever asset. And then off you go. And here we go. Transfer completed. You've just received 10 uni in your wallet. That's always nice to see. So now we're going to click on Uniswap. And down here, it's going to say confirm. Looks like 10 uni. Came in 11.41, worth 28.78. Wow, look at that. So it is weird though. Up here it says 0, 0.00. Maybe it'll update in the uh, when I log into next time. But the big thing is that it's, it's here right now. I can check EtherScan. I can uh, look it up just to make sure, and it's all right there. And as I come back, ah, there it is, 28.66. So pretty easy, easy peasy. That's how it all works with cryptocurrency digital assets. Thanks for sticking with me to the end. I really appreciate it. If you don't know, I just got a message from uh, Shieldfolio or Stonebook. The Stonebook, which everybody seems to love, I have uh, two myself. It is now available for order. It was sold out for the last um, three weeks, four weeks, something like that. But I just got a message that they are back in stock. And uh, if you haven't seen these, they're pretty cool. Uh, you can write down all your private keys and your passphrases and everything else. It's water resistant, tear resistant. It's not fireproof, uh, but uh, it's pretty darn close. Anyhow, you can do a lot of things. Also, people were saying that, hey, I wanted that ghost pen because I'd really like to be able to like write things down in invisible ink, which is pretty cool. And uh, there, that was an extra charge. Well, now that ghost pen comes free uh, with your order. If you look in the description of every one of my videos, there's going to be a link uh, to Shield Folio. And if you can use that link, you get 15% off. So go check that out. Anyhow, uh, that is it for today. So thanks for sticking with me. I appreciate it. If you like those types of videos, there's going to be two more that's going to pop up on your left and right. I'll let uh, YouTube do that magic, and uh, that's it. So thanks again. I really appreciate it, and uh, I will see you on the next one.